Hey everyone, Catch em All Collectibles here. In today's video, we are going to talk expected value, a little bit of risk, a little bit of overconfidence, maybe even a little bit of opportunity cost. I think these are all very crucial things to keep in mind when running a Pokemon business, when speculating, investing, whatever you want to call it. Not even necessarily, it doesn't need to be a business, but side hustle. If your intent is to make money in Pokemon, I think this is a less collector focused video. Generally speaking, that's what this channel is, but this one's even even less so towards the collector. Because some, some of those things, finding value, knowing when, when the right time to buy things, will apply to the collector uh, as well as the business and all that. But anyways, I found myself saying it a lot recently in lives and uh, just over the, the past several months, uh, more so in the past month probably. The outcome of a decision does not correlate or have anything to do with the correctness of that decision. One example that I'm constantly giving is you go to a casino. You go to a casino, it's negative EV inherently. The casino is designed to stack the odds against you. Certain individuals will go into a casino, they will leave with more money in their pocket. The vast majority of people, and mathematically speaking, over the long run, uh, random games of blackjack, random spins of the roulette wheel, the casino will lose money on individually, but long term, the math is on their side. And let me quickly, hopefully I don't lose people. Let me quickly show you. First two results. So this one, very complicated. We, we have a summation. We have an integral. Very scary math, stu math stuff. But let me make it a little still scary. But this was the second one. This, this is the second one that I think I can more easily describe to people what expected value is for those who may not understand, may not know. But let's take something very simple like a coin flip. If I'm bidding you on a coin flip, you want to bet $1. If it hits tails, you get $2. If it hits heads, you get zero. That's EV zero. You're not going to run a business at EV zero because you're going to just break even long term. You do a million coin flips, probably going to be about 500,000 to 500,000. Maybe it's 500,000 and 20 versus, yeah. Anyways, you might make a little money. You might lose a little money. You're expected to make no money though. That's not a good business thing. So here, X1, P1, outcome one, and then the probability of that. So, so outcome one is heads. I think I said tails pays you the $2. Heads pays you zero. So X is zero, P is 0 0.5. So zero times 0 0.5 is zero plus X2, P2. I mean, P2, P tails is 0 0.5 as well, where the X2 is two. So two times 0 0.5, one. Zero plus one, your, your expected value is one. In roulette, there are 40 uh, possibilities. And you only get paid out 35 to 1 if you hit an individual. So 5 out of 40 times. And again, long term, long run, you will lose money on roulette. Anyone who plays 1 roulette spin, 10 roulette spins, 50 roulette, roulette spins, you might get out of there making some money. The more you play, the longer you play, it becomes a mathematical certainty that you will lose money to the casino. Because, yeah, the odds are just in their favor. And what you try to do in a Pokemon business, in a, whatever the business is, you try to just make plus EV decisions. And I, I found actually a great quote. I knew that there had to be a quote out there on this. It's from Howard Marks. The most important thing, uncommon sense for the thoughtful investor. Must be a book or something. Uh, not, not, have not read it, but I really liked the quote. The correctness of a decision cannot be judged from the outcome. Nevertheless, that's how people assess it. The people go to the casino. They, they go with 100 bucks. They leave with 500 at the roulette wheel. They think they made the right call and, and, and maybe people more so know what they're doing there and they know that it, but in Pokemon, people sometimes take very speculative gambles and just because they made money, they, they think they're right. And that often leads to overconfidence that often leads to various issues. And let, let me finish the quote too. A good decision is one that's optimal at the time it's made when the future is by definition unknown. Thus, correct decisions are often unsuccessful vice versa. So, so what people will do, they'll frequently Monday morning quarterback. Uh, actually, I'm recording this before the Super Bowl. Hopefully you're watching this on Monday. The Chiefs had won. If the Chiefs won, well, I knew all along it was obvious, right? If, if the Chiefs didn't win, I'll just pretend like I never made the prediction that they were going to. And we'll forget about that. We'll, we'll, we'll just take that one away from memory. But anyways, um, that's what people do. Oh, it was obvious. I actually picked. I did. I did an ESPN pool, a bracket. I had the whole, all the semifinalists correct. I had both national, uh, both conference championship games correct. I, I had both 
participants in both. And then I had both winners correct. So if it ends out the Chiefs winning my bracket at the very end, the the, the rungs that mattered, I, I had them all correct. And I've paid paid out very well in DraftKings, all my little uh or entertainment gambling. Negative EV long run, but plus EV when you when you take into account the entertainment value. But anyways, a lot of people get something right and, and say it was obvious. I knew it all along. Metazoo. Metazoo goes to zero. Metazoo ceases operations. It was obvious. There are alternate realities where it went a different way. I, I promise you it could have gone a different way. P people aren't going to believe it because, well, it didn't, right? It, it didn't. Everyone who did anything with it is it just wrong, just completely wrong. And there's no coming back from that. And uh, I mean, very dangerous. Uh, a little bit rambly here in this video, probably. I, I outlined it very lightly. But what you need to do in, in business and what I try to do, um, something like consignment. My, my consignment wing of my business is just fundamentally plus EV. There is no of my, none of my own capital at risk. I am just providing a service for people and making a margin, make, making a cut on their risk capital, their assets, their collectible. That, that is a wing of my business that is just, I mean, I guess there's some brand risk that there's some kind, I, I insure against risks of things getting lost on the way in. But yeah, taking into account this theory, this concept of expected value, you really just need to be mindful of it. And, and when you're grading cards, you're going to get some nines. You're going to get some multiple, multiple things are at play here. And unfortunately, like with the coin flip, this formula was straightforward with the coin flip. This formula relative to the Super Bowl, I mean, you have you have Vegas setting their own odds and all that. And end of the day, I mean, it's it, it's a sporting event where where the ball, depending on how it bounces, like we, we can't attribute exact percentages of that. But when you get into Pokemon, when when you get into grading a card, like there, you you can attribute a percentage. Hey, I think ten percent chance it's going to get an eight, fifty percent chance it's going to get a nine, forty percent chance it's going to get a ten. You you can come up with some numbers and and. By no means do I do this for every card I submit. By no means have I ever done it for any individual card, like actual pen and paper calculated out. A lot of it's just feel. A lot of it's like, historically speaking, I've graded tens of thousands of cards. This one's got a decent shot at getting a 10. But where you have further difficulty is you have today's price. Or maybe you don't even. If the card's first to market, you don't even have today's price. So not only do you not know what percentage to put in for P1 and P2, and then you have P4, P3, P4, P5, you don't even know what the X's are going to be because you don't know what the price are going to be. Either the market hasn't sold any yet. There's no comps. Even if there are comps, just because someone paid it in the past doesn't mean the next person is going to pay it too. A uh, lot of lot of variables here. All you can really do is do your best and, and start small. Start with known amounts of capital that you are able to lose if things go the worst case scenario. Like, like with MetaZoo, I went in with a fixed amount of capital, a lot larger than I went in with Pokemon. Uh, 10 years ago now, but it's because my cash flow, it's because my financial situation was a lot more advanced and a lot better. And, and honestly, the fundamental baseline decision that I made in Metazoo was sound. I mean, I, I knew that I could go, well, I speculated, I, I suspected that I could go in and make margin at partner cost, getting boxes for 56. And I did. The only, the only thing I missed out on, and I held my profit in cards as I did with Pokemon. Now, Pokemon, uh, I, I can say it was obvious. I'm not that guy though. I, I'm not going to say it was obvious. Pokemon was way undervalued. Like I, I, I didn't necessarily think it was undervalued in that the market would make it go up. But from 2014 to 2019, I was collector boy, Dan. I was holding everything. I valued pretty much everything I had more than the market. So I wasn't selling it. So I was profiting all my, all my business, all my side hustle profit was staying in cardboard. And 2020, the, the tables turned and, and the market started valuing things more than me. The numbers got crazy for me. So I got out. Uh, it would be very easy for me to say, uh, just a humble fisherman though. I'm very, very capable and very willing to say, and, I, and I've said it ever since 2020, I was very lucky. I, I did not know that was going to happen. Uh, it's very easy to just say, I knew everything was vastly undervalued, maybe not to the extent, but I knew something was going to happen sometime. I really didn't. I maybe take the, the opposite of overconfidence to the extreme. Uh, I, I think a lot of people just get really clouded and you, you really got to be careful because I mean, one thing that's happening right now, and, and this was not overconfidence on my part, 
but maybe a little bit of too much comfort. Maybe maybe a, a, a step down from overconfidence. We can just say that people get too comfortable at times. Right now, um, Jenny Treasure. Jenny Treasure, I probably have 10 cases of it. Uh, I mean, to some people, that's uh, an extremely significant amount. To, to others, I mean, to where I'm at in my, my journey, my business journey, the capital is not very missed. Like, like the capital is not needed for my day-to-day -day ventures. If it was, though, I, I mean, 151, I, I bought a few cases of that. It, it did very well. There's been, over the past few years, a lot of Japanese sets I've bought 50, 100, 250 boxes of that have performed extremely well. And getting too comfortable, getting too confident, if we want to call it that, however, however you want to call it, a lot of it's just semantics. Getting too comfortable, getting too overconfident, you can really run the risk of uh, damaging your business. You can really run the risk of, of cash flow issues coming up. And another thing I mentioned at the outset of this video was uh, opportunity cost. If I was at a spot where that capital was really needed, th those 10, 20 cases, however many, ca I, I need to do a count at some point. I don't even know how many cases I have on any treasure, but, but I bought some at 90 and then I bought some at 80 and then I bought some at 65 and then I bought some at, I, I'm actually getting hit up by my, my, by my uh, source, by, by my plug, I guess, out of Japan, $45 per box, buy the case. I, I like to buy by the case, case premium or not, that, that's a different conversation. But loose boxes, I, I think loose boxes are going 35 to 40 now. That, that was actually a week ago about that I was hit up for $900 cases. And yeah, it, it's you just need to be careful. It, it, it's so easy to look and say, I knew MetaZoo was going to zero. I knew Pokemon was going to the moon. You, you can apply some of these things to Lorcana. You can apply some of these things to One Piece. Just be careful. Uh, I've made a lot of videos talking about risk. I've made a lot of videos talking about not putting all your eggs in, w in one basket when that one basket can just like completely wipe you out, bankrupt you. Uh, a lot of great Buffett quotes out there on that. Survivorship bias is another thing that we only get with hindsight. Like we, we see the Zuckerbergs, we see, see the Elon Musks, we see all these success stories of people who put all their eggs in one very lucrative basket. I mean, Bitcoin millionaires, Dogecoin millionaires. I mean, Dogecoin, I can't say fully objectively because I'm, I'm being a bit um, dishonest to the whole concept of the video. But Dogecoin, there were people that became millionaires because of it. I would say, and I made this decision for myself at the time, that the risk was not worth it. The opportunity cost was not worth it. Uh, literally, I mean, if that, like that one point in time, if you got in and got out at the right time, zero sum game. So a lot of people uh, lost, but, but some people won. So... Those people, uh, and I, I don't know many, I don't know many to, um, to use as examples, but you, uh, there's probably a lot of people, historically speaking, there's a lot of people that, that will take 10 bucks and turn it into a thousand, take a thousand, turn it into 10,000, and then they go and they just lose it all. Maybe, maybe they go deeper on the next one, they go bigger on the next one, because they just get full of it in their head. And uh, th that's what you need to avoid. That, that's th This whole video is just me trying to, to talk through Metazoo was not 95% of my business. I, I was not that bullish on it. I was not that optimistic on it. I, I was not, like I knew, I knew the higher risk was there and the outcome of, I mean, it's not worth zero, but the outcome, the negative outcomes, the negative outcomes here that had some percentage, I, I would have attributed five, 10, 20, whatever the percentage was, maybe I attributed too low. Like that is what you need to learn. That is what you need to take. But it, whatever you do in business, uh, You've just got to keep an eye on it. You, you've got to keep an eye on your grading. You're going to absolutely have some submissions where the grader just hits you with nines and eights and you don't get enough tens and you lose money. But as long as in the long run, it's plus EV, keep iterating on it. If you are the casino, there will be a random night where the, where the one slot pays the million dollar thing that it only pays once every decade. There will be the one night where, where some guy just gets hot at the craps table and, and walks away with 50 grand and maybe may, maybe the crap section of the casino lost money. They probably still made money overall in the whole casino. But there will be those days, there will be those weeks, months maybe even. You just gotta be able to weather the storm. You can't make any one individual bet big enough that will wipe you out. Let me check my notes and see if I had anything else I wanted to cover. Um, but yeah, ju just to reiterate, a good decision is as far as you can tell, plus EV at, at the time that you make it. With all the information you have, you need to try to, and not like necessarily write it down on pen and paper. You just need to make some judgment, ideally a judgment that is 
guided by experience, guided by some amount of knowledge. Ideally, you're operating in a space where you have actual information. Um, one other example that I use from time to time that I've just been quite lucky on, Bitcoin. I mean, I've made six figures through crypto. I've made six figures through crypto, Bitcoin and Ethereum primarily. I only ever put in four figures. I put in low mid four figures at a time where that amount of money wasn't substantial to me. It was kind of like a novel idea to me. It was a novel, kind of like MetaZoo in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways, I put some amount of money because there was a novelty to it. There was some, uh, some uh something that I liked about it, just fundamentally, that, that I liked about MetaZoo, that I liked about Bitcoin. I liked the idea of it. I didn't think MetaZoo was ever going to outtake Pokemon. I, I didn't think Bitcoin was going to replace, or is, I still don't think today, Bitcoin will replace the US dollar as the reserve currency of the world. I, I don't think we'll all be spending Bitcoin on every transaction we buy in 10, 20, or 100 years. I just enjoyed it. I, I, I liked the idea of it. it. It was an interesting concept to me. I put in an amount of money that I was willing and able to lose. And that one panned out. Like, uh, I, I could sit here and say I knew Bitcoin was going to be an industry move or inter- like sh- shake the industry. And I, I didn't know that. I, I just knew, like, uh, again, and I, I kind of meme on this from time to time. And I hope people know that I'm always memeing. Th- these new Kickstarter TCGs, we, we've got some that are funding a million dollars in two days, million dollars in 30 minutes, whatever it was. When you put in a thousand dollars to something, it can only go to zero uh, unless you get into options trading, trading on margin, like using, like doing things on credit, doing things with leverage. I don't mess with leverage whatsoever because that's when you can really bankrupt yourself. That's when, that's when things are multiplied. So you can go to zero very quickly. You can go negative very quickly. So I don't touch margin. I don't touch anything like that, but, um, it, it, it is true in some, like it, it is fundamentally true. It's just math, right? If you put a thousand dollars new investment without any leverage with your own money that you have free and clear you cannot lose more than your principal you buy an asset it can only go to zero as crazy as that sounds and sometimes the the ev can can be positive even if it's a long shot like say you have a thousand different opportunities and you put ten dollars into each well if one of them becomes a facebook or an amazon or a bitcoin or 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 a dogecoin for the time that it was very high and or a pokemon it can be plus EV to, to take a lot of long risks. And, and sometimes they're fun to take. You just need to be able to separate your ability to predict the long shot winners that you really, when, when you're honest with yourself, I had no idea Bitcoin was going to make me six figures someday. And had I, had I known that, I, full, I, I fully was capable of putting 10 or 100 times the amount of money in that I did. So clearly I didn't know it, right? Some amount of these people who knew, like if you knew MetaZoo was going to zero, you couldn't have really acted on that in any way. Like you couldn't short MetaZoo. But but some amount of people that are so confident that X, Y, or Z is going to happen. Like how are you not a billionaire yet? You're so confident. You, you knew the Chiefs were going to win. You knew this. You knew that. You knew the Niners were going to make the Super Bowl. Well, why are you not a millionaire? Why are you not a billionaire? Um, The overconfidence just gets a little bit much at times. Uh, that, that's what I had for today. That was my Monday rant. Hopefully the chiefs are your super bowl champions. And, uh, I, I was correct. If they were, it was super obvious. I, I don't know how you couldn't have known. I will probably stand to make a few hundred bucks. If the chiefs do win, if the Niners win, I'll probably do some parlays, some random things. Uh, worst case scenario, I might lose a few hundred bucks on super bowl Sunday, but I'll, I'll have a good time. I'll have a good time smoking some brisket and, uh, watching the game maybe having a few IPAs and that's what it's all about. Have, having a good time, enjoying life. And uh, yeah, that's what I've got for today. I appreciate everyone watching. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Did any of that 20 minute rant just make sense or, or is Dan uh, losing his mind after Medizu goes to zero? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I appreciate everyone watching. I will catch you all later.